These are the Samson CO2 pencil mics. You can see the one I'm micing from above here, and this is its pair. It's a very cheap entry into this type of small diaphragm condenser, considering the price for both is $99. It's an absolute steal for a pair of mics like this. But do they hold up, or is it worth to keep saving your pennies for something like this, or the AKG P170. Or perhaps you just skip the small diaphragm condenser and go right for like something like an XM8500 or a pair of them for less than that price. Let's look to answer all of these questions and more. Now I should point out that these were sent to me way back last year for a review when I did the Q9X video. As for the build quality on these, well, it's kind of hard to screw up. It's basically a small baton, good weight to it, nothing too remarkable about the body. It is overall slightly smaller than the AKG P170, but for the most part, it's a pencil mic. One cool thing that I really love about these microphones is they come with shock mounts. Not overly necessary, but it is still a nice touch over the hard mount that comes with the P170. Now, this is a small diaphragm condenser microphone. It's 40 hertz to 20 kilohertz, has a sensitivity of neg 40 dBV per pascal, max SPL of 134 dB, dynamic range of 112 dB, and an equivalent noise level of 22 dBA weighted. Now, that last stat does seem to bother a few people as it does kind of cross the line into the realm of being considered a noisy microphone. Generally, in this entry level price point, most SDCs don't go over 19 dBA weighted. Now for the off-axis rejection of the Samson CO2. This is me speaking pretty close to directly into the capsule from about six inches away. Now I'm speaking into the side of the capsule from about six inches away. Now I'm speaking into the rear of the capsule from about six inches away. So now we have the Samson CO2 overhead, mic'd overhead kind of. I just wanted to bring it into the shot. Up against the AKG P170. This is for the overhead test. Now this isn't necessarily normal use for one of these pencil microphones. However, you can use it for this purpose. And I'm gonna go back and forth between them so you can kind of hear the difference. However, with these pencil microphones, you might notice it does thin them out a bit the further away you get from them. So if you're miking just off frame, you're gonna to wanna to keep it just off frame to try to keep the depth of your voice. But what do you think as I go between these two microphones? Now we're actually going to do a test of the noise that comes off of these two microphones. I'm just gonna gain up and post and you can see exactly how much noise you're gonna get when I put an extra 15 dB of gain on these two microphones. Once again, remember the CO2 has a self noise of 22 dBA weighted and the AKG P170 has a self noise of 19 dBA weighted. See if you can pick up on that. So let's be honest, the one really big pro here is the price. For 99 bucks US, you get a pair of small diaphragm condensers and you're off. Also, I do have to say, I really do like the shock mounts included. It's a nice package for sure. As for the cons, well, that self noise is rough. And while it really doesn't show up blatantly here, once you start stacking them with compression on top of that, that self noise is gonna start to become a real issue. Also, I will have to say, these were thinner sounding when compared to the AKG P170. I found more depth with the AKG and when miking instruments, that extra depth is a really big deal, especially when you're looking to get that nice and wide sound out of it. 
Well, it's a tricky thing, ain't it? I mean, money is money, and these take a lot less monies to possess than the upgrade to the AKG P170. However, pencil mics themselves are actually very niche. They have very little use outside of their intended purpose. And the expanded use case when you look at something like a handheld mic, well, that might be a bit of a tough call. While I'm not a massive fan of the Behringer, the CO2 become a really tough sell at this point, as these things are way more versatile, even if you do lose a bit of that clarity. Perhaps you can save some money and just crush it with some EQ. And then just save up for some pencil microphones while more expensive, will easily outpace the CO2. Because if you're in a position to buy these, ask yourself, how important is it for you to have pencil mics at this stage of your journey? And ask whether or not you can wait for something better. By the way, if you're curious about my last Samsung review, you can check it out right up here.